This video is brought to you by SoccerPro.com, bringing you all the latest soccer gear at everyday low prices with no membership fees. Don't forget to use coupon code SR4U at checkout for 10% off any order of $75 or more. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you an unboxing plus on feet video of the Nike Mercurial Vapor 9 Soft Ground Pro in the Fireberry colorway. There are a few extras included in the box. First extra is a stud wrench. The second extra is an extra set of soft ground screw and studs. This is a longer set in addition to the shorter set that are already included on the shoes. Talk about that a little bit later. And of course you get a string bag like you get with all the top end models. This particular one is that Fireberry Pink with the electric green swoosh on the bottom, the electric green Mercurial logo, and then of course the electric green strings on the bag itself. Again, the string bag as well as the extra set of studs are only included with the top end models. None of the takedown models will include any of those extras. If you guys could leave a like on the video as well, it would be greatly appreciated. Um, this is a look at, of course, the Soft Ground Pro version of the Nike Mercurial Vapor 9. And ever since the Soft Ground stud pattern has been released to the public, or was released to the public, I should say, people have been incredibly confused about what you're actually supposed to use this for. And I would think that it's simple enough that this is a soft ground stud pattern, but because there are these plastic molded studs in between your six soft ground studs, people are under the impression that you can use this as like a multi-surface stud pattern, whether it be using it on firm ground or even artificial grass I've seen, which is absolutely crazy. And before I get into this explanation that might be a little bit lengthy, I don't care what you've seen, I don't care what your friends have told you, I don't care what you've watched on YouTube. This is designed to be used on soft ground and nothing else. I realize that there are screw-in studs on here and because there are other plastic studs, people are under the impression that they can screw out these metal studs and just replace them with plastic ones and it's going to perform like any other firm ground stud pattern. And that's just not the case. What nobody seems to realize is that anytime you have screw-in points on the sole plate itself, that creates a direct pressure point on the sole plate or the base of the sole plate. So when you're using these on a surface that isn't soft, because soft ground, the studs penetrate the ground incredibly easily, which is why you're wearing longer studs that have to be metal. Um, when you're wearing like these screw-in studs on a harder surface, you're creating a direct pressure point that can be really, really bad. It's also going to cause physical harm to the shoe as, potential, as well as potentially causing physical harm for your body. Because like I said, this is a stud pattern that's designed for soft ground and not firm ground. There's a reason why they make firm ground. There's a reason why they make soft ground. And now you're even seeing AG or artificial grass stud patterns because they're designed for one type of plane surface and nothing else. So hopefully that's clear. This is the 11 millimeter studs in the four, four foot and then the 13 in the heel and then I've actually installed the longer set which you don't really see all that often you can see they're really really aggressive um, you have your 13 millimeters in the forefoot and then your 15s in the heel and I don't know if I can't really put them side by side you're not gonna be able to see it that's the longer studs and these are the shorter studs there's a pretty big difference that you can actually see um, and again it just depends on the type of plane surface that you're using you're playing on um, obviously if it's not too soft you can go with this one if you really if the ground's extremely soft then you need to go with this longer set of studs um soft ground surfaces a, a lot of people get confused about that basically it is a soft natural grass playing surface generally the ground tends to be a little bit wet it's not something that you see too much of in north america a lot of people buy the soft ground pro stud patterns but is it something that you actually need frequently not really you might be using these a couple times in the fall when it's rained a lot and um, the fields are actually pretty soft, but during the summer, there's almost no need for a soft ground stud pattern in North America, at least. Um, I'm not sure about England or the rest of Europe, but I'm sure in England, at least, it rains quite a bit, so they probably need these more often than we do over here. Um, as far as what's changed from this soft ground pro stud pattern to the last one, which was on the Vapor 8, um, the answer to that question is absolutely nothing. I realize it might have a slightly different appearance because this uses a solid matte black plastic as opposed to a clear plastic overlay on this glass fiber sole plate. Um, it isn't actually different at all. It's the exact same layout. Nothing's changed on this plastic section whatsoever. So just keep that in mind. If you owned a Vapor 8 Soft Ground Pro, this stud pattern and sole plate is identical. You still have your two layers of glass fiber running through the sole plate. And of course, like I said, you have your two, four screw in studs in the forefoot, your two in the heel. And then of course you have your molded studs, two in the heel, two at the base of the forefoot, one support stud in the middle, and then your two here closer to the toe. Does it make that big of a difference in comparison to your standard? six stud stud pattern soft ground stud pattern I should say the answer to that question is not really 
Um, there is a slight difference, and I would argue that it is a little bit better, but as far as performance goes, there's not a night and day difference between the two. They're both going to perform really well, given that you're playing on soft ground playing surfaces. As far as the Vapor 9 itself is concerned, um, that's the reason why you'd be buying this shoe, obviously. It's a really good shoe. It's not a huge change over the last model, but as far as improvements, if you want to call it, uh, if you want to call it that anyways, I personally prefer the Vapor 9 over the Vapor 8. I actually do have a comparison video between the Vapor 8 and the Vapor 9. If you want to check that out, I'll leave an annotation on screen. If you do want more information on the Vapor 9 right now, it would be a review on the firm ground version, of course. I will leave a link down below in the description if you want to check that out. One of the main attractions to the Vapor 9 this time around is this speed control dimpling on the outside of the upper. That's what gives it this golf ball like appearance. That's this texturing on the outside. Like I said, they're calling it speed control. And what it's designed to do is enhance control. That's what Nike says. And that's kind of confusing, doesn't really make the, all that much sense. But if you look at the dimpling itself, it's very much like a golf ball. You can see there's varying sizes there. And it's actually a lot more aggressive than you would think. Goes through the entire upper, including the tongue itself. And basically what this does is it allows for different types of grip in different types of situations. Meaning that when you are making softer touches on the ball, you have a much smaller surface area, which means that you're going to have a little bit less grip on the ball, so it's going to slide against your foot a little easier. Where when you're making harder touches on the ball, like controlling it or even striking the ball, you're going to get the full impact of the surface area because these dimples are going to compress a little bit and uh, you're going to be left with a little bit extra grip on the ball as opposed to when you're making a lighter touch, if that makes sense. Again, I explained this a lot better in the forward review. Um, as far as what you can't really see on camera, the Fireberry pink section on the front here is going to have a more sticky, a slightly grippier finish than this purple section, where that one has kind of a more of a matte finish. So you definitely have a much more grippy section on the shoe in the forefoot area. Um, so just keep that in mind. Of course, this does feature ACC all conditions control technology, as do all of the new top end models from Nike. Um, kind of like a wet control element. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with it by now. Um, it disappears when it's dry conditions, but when you're playing in the wet, you can notice a little bit of extra friction between your foot and the ball, which is definitely a good thing. Um, central lacing system still, exact same heel liner and uh, uh, insole as the Vapor 8, so nothing has really changed there. And the fit is a little bit different, which I'll show you a little bit later in the on-feet portion of this video. One last thing I want to talk about is the colorway. Obviously, this is the Fireberry colorway with the speed control dimpling, which is exactly what you're going to get on the Sunset colorway as well. There's three launch colorways, Fireberry, Sunset, and Metallic Platinum. The Fireberry and the Sunset have this speed control dimpled upper, whereas the Metallic Platinum colorway has that faux leather finish, similar to what you saw on the Clash Collection Vapor 8. Um, they still both feature ACC, just know that the finish on the Metallic Platinum and the, the, and the Fireberry Sunset colorway is different, so just keep that in mind. Um, as far as the colorway itself goes, this is this Fireberry Pink in the front, uh, fades to this Red Plum Purple colorway. You have the Electric Green Swoosh here, the Black Mercurial logo on the outside of the heel, the White Nike logo on the instep, the Black Laces, the Silver ACC logo, the uh, electric green logo here on the tongue. You have the Volt or the electric green or Volt um, insole on the inside. And then of course the sole plate is a combination of that silver glass fiber, the matte black plastic. Then you have the silver from the metal studs and then of course the orange studs on the bottom as well. So for the most part, this is definitely an interesting, unique colorway. I like the graphics on the Vapor 9 so far. I'm pretty big fan. I think they did a good job with all three launch colorways. But that's pretty much it as far as the on-feet portion of this video goes. And we'll do a quick weigh-in so you can see how light these are. Obviously, the Mercurial line is all about being as light as possible. But again, what a lot of people don't realize is that the soft ground version of pretty much any shoe tends to weigh a little bit more than the firm ground version of the exact same shoe. Um, the reason for that is that the metal studs make up for a little bit more weight and the screw in points on the sole plate actually make up a little bit extra weight as well. So as far as how these feel in hand in comparison to the firm ground model, uh, they feel a little bit heavier in my opinion, but as far as what you can feel on feet, there's not a whole lot of a difference. Um, this is a brand new pair in a size 9 US, I'm going to weigh them for you in real time. Keep in mind that the firm ground version in a size 9 US weighs in at about 6.8 ounces I believe. So we're going to throw these on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 7.6 ounces. So about 0.8 ounces more than the firm ground model. Again, that's not a whole 
giant difference there. That's about the weight of an insole and a set of laces if you want to kind of compare it to something. So again, is that something you're going to be able to notice on feet? Not really. For a soft ground shoe, this is extremely lightweight. So uh, like I said, if you're looking for a soft ground shoe that is a little bit lighter, the Vapor 9 is definitely a good choice. So that's pretty much it as far as the weigh-in portion goes. I'm going to move on to a quick on-feet section so you can get an idea of the fit on this guy. All right, here's a look at the Vapor 9 SG Pro on feet. And if you were wondering if the fit is any different in the SG Pro model in comparison to the soft ground model, the answer to that question is no. There's no difference whatsoever. Same exact cut, same exact shape. So like you guys know already, the Mercurio series has always been a more narrow cut shoe. And the Vapor 9 is one of the more narrow ones that we've seen, um, at least in the last couple of models. It's ever so slightly narrower than the Vapor 8. And that's simply because it just has a little bit of a tighter fit. If you fit in the Vapor 8, you're still going to fit in the Vapor 9. But like I said, if you do have wider feet, um, the Mercurial line as a whole is something that you should probably stay away from. A question that I get a lot of is, how do I know if I have wide feet? There's no real answer to that question. Uh, feet come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. And there's no predetermined width or like measurement that I can give you to determine whether or not you have wide feet. You kind of just have to figure it out on your own. As far as the fit of the 9 is concerned, it's very narrow cut through the midfoot, really hugs that inside or that instep of your foot really nicely, giving you that true one-to-one -one feel on the shoe, giving it also a very responsive feel, which is definitely a good thing, whereas the toe box and forefoot is also very, very narrow. Again, there's pretty much no extra space on the inside of the shoe if you do get the proper fit. As far as sizing goes, these definitely do fit true to size. I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here, and the fit in the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair for these of these for yourself, and you want the best possible fit, I strongly recommend going true to size. That's pretty much it as far as the on-feet portion of this video goes, and I'll leave you to my final thoughts. Alright guys, that's it for my unboxing plus on-feet video of the Nike Mercurial Vapor 9 SG Pro. The full art and review for this guy is not up yet, but it should be up in the next couple of weeks or so, once I get some time to wearing these obviously. Um, if you do want more information on the Vapor 9 right now, the full art and review for the firm ground model is already up on the website, soccerreviewsforyou.com. You can find that linked down below in the description. In the meantime, if you check out the review page for this guy, you'll find the high quality images of this shoe. That'll give you a better idea as to how it actually does look in person, as well as buy it now links with the best prices online, including some exclusive SR4U coupon codes to get you guys some additional discounts if you are interested in ordering a pair for yourself. If you do have any questions regarding this shoe, feel free to leave a comment down below. And again, if you could leave a like on the video, it would be greatly appreciated. If you're not subscribed to the channel already and you did enjoy today's video, be sure to hit that subscribe button for daily videos on all the latest soccer gears, such as unboxing, on feet videos, reviews, comparisons, some free kicks, all kinds of crazy stuff happens on this channel. So if you do want to be a part of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button. One last thing, if you're not following me on Instagram, my Instagram is Josh. You can go ahead and look me up or again, the link will be down below in the description. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, thanks for watching.